Um, why is my recording on standby? That's weird. Because of the lock screen? What? Are you listening to me right now, CIA? Well, I know you are. Well, uh, that's an interesting question. Is the CIA listening to me on my Samsung Galaxy S4 that's not connected to anything other than whatever internal hookups are hooking up to the nefarious networks, which I have no idea about. But let's see, is my wife, my Wi-Fi is active. Can I shut that off? Oh, I do have it shut off. Yeah, you still show me five bars. That's weird. Or is that only four? Well, it is a T-Mobile phone, so I'm sure it's only four. The <clears throat> very existence of this introductory uh, blurb here that is audio recording, so I guess it's not a blurb. Uh, does a blurb have to be written? That's interesting. I don't know. I don't care. That's not really that interesting. But by creating this audio preface to the next sequence, well, I have naturally contrived the opening. No, what I'm really doing is contriving the ending because now that I've given you that, you're going to... Am I forcing a contrived reason to stay to listen? But I don't want you to listen. Wow, this is a real existential moment for this podcast. This isn't a podcast! Boy, I'm sounding more schizophrenic than usual. So, the reason I actually wanted to record this part was to tell you that I had gotten on initially to tell you why I was doing this, but then I forgot to tell you that part, so I was going to tell you now, and I didn't want to leave it for the second part, because I kind of like the way the first recording ended. Oh, so th this whole recording is contrived now, isn't it? feels that way. This will make a lot more sense if you get to the ending, but that's not a reason to listen. Actually, that is a reason to listen. But I don't know if you should listen to me. Well, if you're listening to this, though, you're already listening to me. This is... Are you having a crisis too? Am I, is this part of your dream or am I part of, of a dream? Uh, I hope I'm not dreaming. Let's see. How do I figure that out? Let's see if I can cut my hand open. I meant to say pause there. Pause. Okay. I didn't even go get a knife and like pretend to put it over my hand to see if I could cut it open. But I blew my nose. And I think that's a good way to know if you're dreaming or not because my ears started popping. Which means my sinuses are clearing up. And that just seems like too much detail for a dream. <clears throat> so... Hello, universe. Welcome to my reality. If you've stayed this long, well, I'll bet you're over 40. Um, that said, why am I doing this? <clears throat> okay. For the most part, because I want to. But it took a long process of encouragement to be confident enough to speak my mind, even in private, to the public universe. And having done this now almost 400 times, I can say, except for masturbation, this is probably the thing I've done the most. Well, and practice the piano, play golf, play tennis. I mean, come on, that's stupid. All right. And I don't even beat off that much anymore. I mean, there's the occasional shower that you just, for whatever reason, think about things that you shouldn't be thinking about, but... I mean, even that, when was the last time that happened? So, having lost my libido, well, lost it? How, having put it into a drawer, finally, where it stayed shut, and now I can call it out at will, but not letting it dominate my life. Well, that's a fairly recent change at 54. I would say, what, five years? Seven at the most? three at the least. So somewhere in that window, I went from what we all know it is like to have a fire hose to pretending it's not there to realizing I don't care that I'm pretending it's not there. I can choose it not to be there. This is new. Where'd this come from? Am I really able not to have... Okay. So when you, your dick's not dominating your day, well, all of a sudden you mentally clear shit up. Or at least that's one theory as to what happened to me. But around the time that this is all going down, well, no, I'd say the Mandela effect happens earlier. The Mandela effect was the first real disconnect that left me 
without answers, without even necessarily knowing what questions I should be asking. Because it was such a what-the-fuck moment, again and again and again and again and again, that for the first time in my life, the only thing that gave me peace was hearing that there was somebody else experiencing it. Because exactly what they would describe is what it felt like to me, too. I'd never been in a position where I needed to lean into and find a group for support. And that certainly describes what it felt like to go through those disconnects. And I don't even think about them anymore because if I do, I still don't even know what questions to ask or where to look for answers. It has become a puddle of uncertainty that I'm okay with. Something I've never really had before. Um, because to me, whatever's uncertain is something I just haven't figured out. But I'll never figure out what happened with the Mandela Effect. So, life goes on, right? But it was also at this time... Oh, man, I gotta smoke something before we get into this shit. Hang on. Okay. Don't let me forget that the next chapter is Lily, and she's important. But before I close the book on Mandela, the thing about Mandela Effect is, well, number one, the people who have been affected, I found to be phenomenal. That was number one. There was a synergy among the impacted of extreme human creative greatness that left me somewhat mm, full of myself, maybe? Anyhow, I, there's no question I gained a little ego in the Mandela Effect community at large. Not a, in a sense of my ego grew as I was being recognized in that community. I'm saying the idea that these are the people who were affected, and I know I'm part of this group, well, that that's the kind of unexpected selection to a team that I unfortunately dripped a little ego off the whole experience. And still, if I'm telling Peter at the gate, yeah, I guess I'm a little full of myself when it comes to that Mandela effect thing. Because you have to go one way or the other with it. You have to either believe in something greater and bigger than yourself, and that while there is such an existence, you also have purpose in that direct ascension. In other words, you got to get kind of faithy and religious-y, or you have to go 180 degrees the other direction. And you have to ask yourself, am I a non-player character? A seriously upsetting question to have to contend with because the evidence is pointing toward it. And I can't disprove that, obviously. And if I allow myself to even migrate toward it, like some save file in a new version of the game, well, that's a worthless existence. One I could choose. I could just call it quits. Decide that I have enough evidence to support the whole thing's a sham. Some gamesters trick on soul energy that they've invented in a metasphere of look what we can make the monkeys do now. But that's not how I feel. In fact, for the first time, maybe ever, except perhaps as a child, I have a sense of wonder about my future. It fills me with a content level of anticipation, I suppose, to be able to not just now sit comfortably in a world with certain grand unknowns, 
but to be navigating its presence with the confidence that what I'm doing is not just correct, but it's with destiny. That's a that's a space in which I couldn't exist until I'd learned to love myself. And all of this may sound um, unrelatable, like I'm full of shit. And again, I'm 100% on that criticism train. I wouldn't listen to any of this. It's just what I've experienced. And so why am I doing this? Because these experiences have left me in an unusually tranquil level of existence. One that has not much greatness embedded in it, but knows the moments of greatness it will participate within, make every moment of life worth living. It's like I don't have to try to be enthusiastic about things. I don't even have to point toward a destination of possible return, because wherever I look, I see huge return. And this isn't even something that can be described as overly confident or filled with one's own sense of worth. Because it's only by giving myself to situations in which others are in need that this purpose truly gets realized. But as it's happening or as I reflect upon its occurrence in my life, I'm left floating up into mental stability and hmm, tranquility is the only word I can really use. I'm going to have to investigate these states of mind, find out where I'm at. It's as if accomplishment, as if the job you came here to do is being done. Good day's work has been put in. The satisfaction of knowing the day really couldn't have gone better. Well, obviously, if you listen to the next part, you're going to realize that I already had a tantrum today. So how could this day go better? Well, you could quit having tantrums. Maybe. Or maybe the tantrums in life are here to teach us lessons. I'm rarely harsh with myself. When I need to be, I am. But I've given up on forcing myself to have to have that conversation. And... uh I put myself through some shit. So when it comes to talking through your demons, I've done some dark work. But nothing about you or anyone you know is beyond forgiveness. I know. I'm having a hard time with that part too when it comes to like the child molesters. Trust me. <sighs> Anything that takes the innocence of a children and manipulates it for any reason. Well, I find that level of human stain to be hard to clean out. But since I haven't had to forgive any child molesters yet, even though I lived next door to one for a while, I never had to forgive him because rarely did I even want to talk to that crazy ass motherfucker. <clears throat> Why am I talking about this? That you're even wondering. Good for you. Way to think clearly. Um, and if you're thinking super clearly, well, why would you want to listen to the next part? You think it's going to make sense of all that shit I said earlier about contrivances? <laughs> Good luck. Hello, kitty. No copyright infringement intended. Hello, kitty. Meow. Well, what do you know? Talk about stepping up and trying to fill in for Phoebe. Uh, hello, universe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Simmer down there, awful Counting Crow song. How do I stop the... I should be able to double... Ugh, I'm going to turn off the... So, uh, hello, universe. Um, stumbling through the opening is so much more appropriate than I uh, was <clears throat> intending to have happen. 
because at 12.32, as I reached for my little blue Samsung Galaxy S4, uh, it wasn't in its usual charging place, which of all the things that I basically use for one purpose only, it's this phone. But having forgotten that when I went down to practice my serve a few nights ago, I grabbed all my cameras because yeah, 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 I know. Um, anyhow, having left said Samsung Galaxy S4 in my tennis bag, well, it took me a while to remember what the fuck I did with the thing. So now I'm coming at you. F what time is it? It is. Bum, 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 bum. Hello, kitty. No copyright intended infringement. It's 1238 on the 1st of October. Hello, fall. Um, in fact, having played tennis this morning, there were leaves all over the court, and I remember thinking, that is definitely a good description for when I think it turns to fall, when I have to start moving the leaves around on the tennis court so I have secure footing. That's definitely fall, baby. But it was beautiful this morning, and it's beautiful right now. And uh, that's probably what's got the cat in such a good mood. Hello, kitty. This time, copyright infringement intended. Don't tell. Oh, now you're licking my yogurt. Oh, damn it. There goes my yogurt. On that note, pause. Okay. So I'm back. Oh, should I smoke? Yeah. Hang on. Pause. Okay. Since I rarely give the cat any credit for being amusing, because she's not, but she's been working on the uh, yogurt container that is one of those uh, 32 ounces. Probably it's 28 ounces if I go look at it right now, to be honest. Let's not do that. That'll be disappointing. Um, but she's got her head about halfway down. She's licked the sides to that point. And there is some, there's about a quarter inch at the bottom, which I'm hoping will tempt her to get her head all the way down there. I, I mean, this is, this is why you own a cat, right? Because this stuff happens once in a while. And it's funny. Okay, fuck. I'll stop talking about cat videos. And obviously, that is not why you own a cat. You own a cat because if you don't, the mice run up your fucking kitchen walls. And and so, if you do own a cat, and that happens, well, do you really own a cat? Okay. I believe... Are we, are we done here? Okay. See ya, kitty. Not intended to be copyrighted or infringed upon. Is there a see you, kitty? Should be. Um, I think the reason you own a cat, beyond the mouse control, rodent control, let's be fair. Not that I don't have rodents above and beyond mice. I don't think, God, that'd be awful. What would that be? That would include beavers? Aren't they rodents? Okay, my point is, cats see ghosts or something. I don't know what it is that would occur in this house at 11.35 in the evening, routinely, that would make my cat freak the fuck out. It got to the point where I thought, if I were to record the regularity with which this happens, I wonder if there's a behavioral tick that is chasing her down. Like, what happens at 11.35? Does the local news shut down so a signal stops happening so she quits reacting to something? Or is it the opposite, that the local news turns to a national signal, so she gets bombarded with a frequency of wave that hasn't occurred until that point in time? I mean, it was too regular not to be attributable to something on the 24-hour clock cycle. I mean, she doesn't just freak out because we're almost at midnight. And, uh, and frankly, she hasn't done it for a while. But for, for a good couple of years, it was to the point where if people were in my house at 11.35, I would joke about my cat's about to freak out. And it would happen. Um, <clears throat> but when it started happening at other times of the day, it was, it was different. When she would freak out at 11.35, she would just kind of look one direction and then run away from that direction. Then she'd look another direction and run away from that direction, like she was seeing ghosts. Um, but then during the day, she started having episodes where she would like get hissy 
at a spot. Like, I couldn't carry her into the kitchen, for instance. She'd just get all fucking pissy and jump out of my arms. Whereas any other time, she'd at least let me carry her through to the back door. You know, I mean, like, she wouldn't fly out of my arms at the kitchen entryway. Or into the second bedroom or something weird. You know what I mean? Like, and, and it was never the same thing. But she would just get territorially upset. And this took a while to, to figure out because, uh, oh, it was, yeah. Well, she, if a cat is irritated, it can be about anything. They get no problem showing you their, their emotional side. In fact, I think in some ways my cat has helped me manage my anger because she's the angriest little fuck I've ever known. And if at any time she's being aggressive, I don't tolerate that. She can be as standoffish and leave me alone-ish as she wants to be. But she can't be coming at us, the dog or me, or that's out of bounds. So in trying to train her on this, I would frequently break her up from the dog when she was overreacting. And she'd let me manhandle her for the most part. I took a few scratches initially, but we got to the point where she knew all I was trying to do was to get her out of the room. Because I didn't want either dog to attack her. And this was really when I had Millhouse, that I was afraid Millhouse was going to kill her. Because she was a little fucking shit. So, <laughs> in trying to manage all this chaos, uh, there would be times when I would try to carry her through to, you know, her safe zone and get her the fuck out of the house, as it were where she wouldn't let me like, and, and then I would pick her up and say, bullshit, you're not going to do it. And then she'd fucking fly out of my arms again. And then I could walk her through to the front door or whatever, or I could get her out a different way without resistance. But if I try to get her through certain areas, it would freak her the fuck out. And, uh, and then, then she started doing, well, it doesn't matter. I certainly did not get on to talk about my cat. Not when I have so much else to talk about. And I'll admit, I'm in a bit of an overly buoyant mood. Because today I get to have a one-to-one -one with one of the, <clears throat> we'll call them mixed up males. Um, the mums. Yeah, they're the mums. Uh... I get to have a conversation with one who truly uh, intrigues me for reasons I'm certainly not going to divulge until I've told him in our conversation that I'm going to divulge to the universe that he's a test case in my state of what's gone wrong with these crippled young men. Anyhow, with that on my agenda, obviously, I can barely watch the clock. It moves so slow, and I'm in such high anticipation of this, what should we call this, interaction. I dig this guy, except for the ways I don't. And the ways I don't are the conversation we're going to have. And I told him to arm himself with a list of shit for me to have to talk about, which means I might have to broach a subject I don't want to broach, but fair is fair. Um, <clears throat> so that conversation, I don't know if I'll be able to record. I would like to. I just don't know if I'll be able to. So that put me into the position of thinking, well, fuck, man, I got to get some things down right now before I forget about them or before I get influenced by my later conversation or whatever else. Or. And <clears throat> that's when I realized it was 1232. And I thought to myself, well, if I can just find my little Samsung Galaxy S4 in the next minute or two, I can fire that sucker up right at one, two, three, four, which is of course a contrived opening, especially because the only real contrivance I ever would shoot for would be a numbers time contrivance and having it spell itself out in real time as if readily available, uh, like a pie just cooling on a windowsill that I walk by and think, oh, I'm so hungry for dessert. Wow, look at that pie. Um, it seems like opportunities meeting quirkiness exactly as I would hope the dominoes might fall over. Except, why is my fucking Samsung Galaxy S4 not on this charger? 
is the first question at 1232 that should have had me thinking, well, of course it does have me thinking this, but it should have me just sit back and say, well, let's not have to figure that out because all this is going to do is turn into two minutes of chase my tail, which of course at exactly 1035 will be when I spot my Samsung Galaxy S4. Actually, it'll happen about 10 seconds before that because even if I had fumbled fast enough to get in there at 1034 or 1234 and 59 seconds, which would be the ultimate of contrivance openings, doing something just so that you can get it in to a spot where it looks meaningful. Hmm. Yeah. Well, the universe doesn't let me do shit like that anymore. So, of course, I found my phone at 1235. And, of course, as the entire thing's unfolding, I'm thinking to myself, ah, the lesson was learned the minute it wasn't on the charger. And I guess I like that I immediately realize now, when I've let my systems down, I have certain ways that if I don't maintain the regularity of those ways, I get knocked a kilter, if that's a word. I'm pretty sure it is. It doesn't matter. If I'm in a position to do the routine things that keep my day running, it's a good thing for me. Doing what I can to make sure those systems are being efficient and functional is a necessary thing for me. But organizing my life around systems that are so rigid and dependable that there's never a time when they're by my own hand in some state of dysfunctionality? Fuck no, man. Fuck no. I can't live up to that. <laughs> no. So, at a moment when, of course, all I had to have done, and I never even took my Galaxy out of my tennis bag, which, as I'm putting it in there, I'm thinking, have I ever even used this at the tennis courts, even though I brought it down there like a hundred times? Because the thing most likely to happen now that it's off its charger is that I'll lose this motherfucker. And I like recording with it. I'm sure my subconscious had this whole conversation when I was putting it in my tennis bag. Which was a good conversation for my subconscious to be there for. Because it was right. That said, I still got it home. It's not like I lost it. It's just I forgot where I put it. Because I was using it for a purpose it doesn't have. So, going through all these things, of course, makes me realize, right, when I take something that I literally would hate to lose because I use it for a very distinct purpose, and then go traipsing around the universe using it for other purposes, in a way that in no way embodies necessity, well, yeah, I deserve to misplace said items along the way, because I have a track record of being prone to doing just that. So, all of that lesson is basically rushed into my head, as I see it not on his charger. It's as if I now know my own feedback loops well enough that they don't have to activate, they just have to be triggered. Because as soon as they're triggered, the entire sequence replays a sense of tranquility responding to the fact that my systems are good and intact when I adhere to them. The ones that I've developed are easy to adhere to. So in this unique example of not adhering to my systems, let's not overlook the lessons that are, again, still needing to be learned. Which are two here. One, plug in my fucking phone, put things where they need to be so that I know where my keys are, my wallet is. The things that get me out the door with ease need to be systematized. Like phones. But when I break my systems down, that's because it's who I am. So having a gap in my day for the time when I have to go phone hunting is normal for me. It doesn't bother me. In fact, it reminds me that... <sighs> what does it remind me? That I guess I love myself. Because there are things about myself I'll never change. I'll never be somebody who's early. I just won't be. Honestly, because I'm selfish. I know this. And I want every second that is available to me without 
encumbrance available. I don't know why. But I'm not asking to infringe upon time I would spend with you just as much as the time I would spend with you I'd want to not be infringed upon ever. I'm always available in the moment. But that doesn't mean that I have moments on hold in case something might go wrong or whatever. No, fuck no. No, why would I want to bank something as insurance? No, just be ready to bob and weave. Deal with things as they break down. And then realize if it's your role that broke it down, get better. That's enough. You don't have to be in love with yourself to love yourself. I'm not the person I'd shoot to be in every example of demonstration to humanity's best. But as an overall role model, fuck yeah, man. Put me on screen. Well, don't. This thing's audio anyway. How would we do that? Put up like a one of those technical difficulty signs from the 50s? Pause. Okay. In honor of Phoebe, because if she were here, she would probably want to know the answer to this. She would ask the question at least. And that is, how is it that I can be so buoyant and then actually find myself in a mood that's even more buoyant than that. Because, see, my dog, that's basically what she was. She was a presence of such high-level happiness. And and, (laughs) happiness is the wrong word. I don't know how how you describe something where there is no question... They're embracing the moment of life at its fullest. That's not happiness. I don't... Oh, pardon the... Wow, wow, sorry. Well, pause. Okay, those were yogurt burps. Interestingly enough, I know nobody cares about this. But I do analyze my burps because I know when I come back from wherever I have been, um, my body burps differently. It burps up different gases which is why they don't get away with it. But I've given up on them. I don't even care about them. I know I sound like I'm a delusional schizophrenic right now, but I'm not, unfortunately. I wish I were. No, I don't. I've, I've seen that too close to think I wish I were. But um, it's, it's certainly not something that's underpinning my current trajectory of conversation, unfortunately. So for those of you concerned, don't be. For those of you who think, You don't even know yourself well enough to say those things. I say, nice move. My turn. Um, If you're going to let your dog, who just recently passed, become the conduit of conversation into a meaningful texture conversation to share with someone else, well, they should think you're fucking crazy. That's part of the game. So I I don't begrudge your instincts. I just want to try to sway you from them. By saying, it, is, it isn't that I'm buoyant all the time. Because I actually had a pissy little moment this morning. When I got on the tennis court, five minutes into it, I just didn't want to play. I was being a little brat for no reason. I was playing fine. I, uh, I was holding something against my opponent that was completely unrelated to tennis that I didn't even know that I was still holding against him. Because as a recovering late person, who is still occasionally late, like I was this morning, I uh, expect people to give me a three or four minute window regardless, because we're humans. And while I have technically earned the spit back that is, if you're not here four minutes after we agreed you'd be here, I'm fucking leaving, because who knows if you're showing up. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough even though that's really a conversation that doesn't apply to anything, especially tennis-related, for the last four years. Maybe five, but at least four. But fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Fuck, man. That's how bad my track record is? I get it. I got three minutes before you say goodbye. Um, but, 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 you do carry a cell phone. You do never answer it. I did try to call you at 841 when we said we'd be here at 845. I did get here at 850. And the only reason I'm late is because I got into a line at King Supers that turned into one of those lines that you're like, oh, fucking A. Oh, fucking A. Oh, fuck, it's 841. Fuck, if I don't leave now, I will be late. But I'm next. 
Oh, fuck. Why is she, is she getting out a check? Oh, my fucking God. Okay, it was one of those days. And I'm still only five minutes late. And as a person who is a latish person, I probably don't deserve that fifth minute. I'll give you that. But as a person who doesn't answer their phone, maybe you have one 34-second moment of humility. Okay, no. But because I happen to bike in the back door the way that you go out, because I'm coming from King Supers, so that's the closer way to get in, and catch you heading out, you say to me, oh, I was just leaving. I was thinking, oh, I just got here. Should we play? There's one court open. You apparently didn't think to save it. We should hurry. <sighs> so I grabbed the last court. Which unfortunately means that we're playing in a middle interior court with opponents left and right. Opponents. I'm sorry. Co-captains on this tennis journey of ours this morning. We're playing on either side of us. And my 80... What year is it? Three? 83-year-old father is on the other side of the net. Now, he likes to pretend that he's still a 43-year-old tennis player. But the one way he doesn't pretend is he knows he can't run after balls anymore. Which means every fucking shot that goes errant, I'm going to retrieve, if possible. And we're going to annoy the fuck out of the two players, or the players playing left and right of us. So I'm going to take every opportunity to snag balls that are slightly headed their way. Because I know we're going to depend on every mishit my father makes. And the ones I make. I'm not trying to be above sending a ball to the next court. But, uh, so naturally, I let all this get in my head. Because we do. That's what humans do. Instead of realizing that any of the next sessions I'm on the court with my father could be the last one that we're on the court together, and making sure I have sewn in a perfect memory from some time we're on the courts together. That's the only obligation I have going forward, is every time that I'm lucky enough to get one more session of tennis with my 83-year-old dad is a time that I am fortunate. Because those times are the rarest thing I probably have now. And for me to sit there and think that all this silliness about time and anything to do with having to throw a little extra hustle on the court, well, I was, I was humbled in the moment of hubris and distaste I had shown for myself. And uh, from there on, fucking played my ass off. Fucking played my ass off. And I was playing pretty well at the time. I mean, I'm not saying my tennis was all that affected, but holy fucking shit, man. And I, I even tried today because I was trying to give my dad the kind of balls that I didn't want him stabbing at fucking backhand smashes so that he would send a ball directly left. I was, I was putting puff balls out, to be honest. I finally toned my game down for the first time for my dad ever. Ever. And still was hitting shots that were out of this fucking world. And it was it was like, oh my God. I mean, one of the things my tennis game does not have, my life does not have, is first gear. And what I saw today was how effective it is to occasionally slow the fucking ball down. Put it somewhere specific. Very specific. It was, uh, it was, it was a great hour and 15 minutes of time because of how much I got away from myself and into the moment and how much that gave me back. So, <clears throat> really, fucking hey, this is the first time I'm realizing why I'm in such a buoyantly buoyant mood. But I guess it's because I like learning things about myself. I just do.